This episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Welcome to the Boston WordPress Meetup. Uh, my name is Kurt Aang. John Bishop. Uh, tonight, June 25th, the Wi-Fi code, if you don't already have it, WP0625 on Cambridge. You can follow us on BostonWP.org, at BostonWP on Twitter, and hashtag BostonWP. So a quick shout out to Microsoft Nerd for letting us do this here every month. Um, I don't know if they accept the Wi-Fi code, but yeah, they give us the Wi-Fi um, the area, and they're really cool. So. They used to give us pizza and drinks are <laughs> out there. Um, thanks to HostGator. Uh, they have a great one-click install. We use it all the time for the Unis Workshop, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, Self-install lots of software, room to experiment. Use the code BostonWPMeetup for a 25% discount. Our pizza sponsor this month, this month, this month. wow, you <laughs> can see what I hit at. Um, this month is Astonish, and uh, here's Jesse from Astonish to talk a little about that. Thanks. Munchies? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm going to be really brief because I don't want to bore any of you guys, and I don't have interesting stuff to talk about like these guys. but. Uh, Astonish is a company in Rhode Island that I work at. I'm the director of web interface and uh, development. I have a couple of my uh, crew members here as well. Uh, we decided to sponsor one because I've been coming here for a long time. I've spoken here, and I, I love this meetup, and I love what they're doing. The other thing is, is that we are currently hiring for a front-end developer, and I figured, you know, why not uh, take an opportunity to feed you guys and then uh, maybe get you guys to buy me a beer afterwards and talk about how you need a job. So if anybody out there needs a job, uh, we're going to be hitting up a bar afterwards. Uh, but at the same time, I would love to just hear about what you guys are doing and, and all that. And if anybody needs to join an awesome team, uh, we're building some really cool stuff. I'll get into that on a more deeper level if you're interested. Uh, but you know, we're looking for front-end developers, HTML, CSS, jQuery, some design skills, nothing crazy, and then uh, WordPress, of course. So. Hit me up. My name is Jesse Friedman. I'm sitting over here, and uh, I'll be mingling. And then afterwards, uh, you know, who knows? All right. If you miss Jesse tonight, he'll be at Boston WordCamp next month. That's right. So um, we are now the second largest uh, WordPress meetup in the city. We only need like 700 more people, so tell your friends, <laughs> and we'll be number one. Who is number one? New York City. So, um, and also, if anyone else wants to help out, uh, both organizing or speaking um, or sponsoring, uh, email or come up and talk to Kurt and I. Um, but yeah, we ultimately need, especially after working at more speakers and sponsors moving forward from then. So, any help we can get, we greatly appreciate it. Um, and also, so we have a website, bostonwordpress.org, bostonwp.org, uh, that there are forums, and they will be up eventually. Uh, for the time being, you can get to the meetup page, and you can get to the jobs board, which people do use. So check it out, whether you have to post something or you're looking for work. Um, but yeah, hopefully soon after WordCamp, we'll have the new site up and ready. Um, until then, you can find all the existing slides and notes and stuff from previous meetups on there. And the position that we're hiring for is on that job board right now. <laughs> WordCamp Boston, which is actually only three weeks away. So who here is attending WordCamp Boston? Yeah. Wow. I'm impressed. Awesome. All right. Well, July 14th and 15th at Boston University, we have an all-weekend camp on WordPress. Beginner, intermediate, developers, designers. Um, we have full schedule and information up on our site, 2012.boston.wordcamp.org. You can also just type in wordcampboston.com. Um, that's the compliment. But if you register by this Friday, you're guaranteed a lunch, swag, and a name on a badge. Anytime after that, you do forfeit some rights to that because we do need to get orders into to vendors. Um, the prices are lower this year. It's $35 for two days. Last year it was $40. <coughs> Uh, 75 for a patron or, or individual sponsor, and $25 for a student. Um, we also have a beginner's workshop on Friday, July 13th. Uh, 
Uh, we have 65 registered users and about 35 people on the waiting list already. Mm -hmm. um, if you do want to still put your name on the waiting list, we are going to open some seats up. I just don't know how many. Um, but feel free to go ahead. Um, I didn't put it up here. It's, uh, wow, I can't remember it. It's been so long. I think it's bostonwpshop.eventbrite.com. Um, if you're interested, just come find me afterwards. I'll be sitting in the back. Um, I'll be happy to do that. So tonight, we have two sessions. They're both going to be in this room back to back. First talk will be, Who is That Masked Man? by Dave Werner. You can follow him the Big D uh, underscore TDF. And then right after Dave will be Custom Post Types, which is more of a developer talk, uh, by John. So do you guys have any questions before we get started? Great, you guys are easy. Thanks, guys. First said, my name is Dave. Um, this is a much larger group than I'm used to presenting to, so I will be wandering through the room as I speak. It's mostly nervous energy. Uh, I'm also going to try very hard not to burp at you from the pizza. <laughs> um, my assumption is this speech is going to be a little different than what you guys are used to having. This is really loud. <clears throat> okay, sounds loud to me, sorry. Uh, a little bit different than what you guys are used to having at these events. Uh, this is going to be kind of a storytelling and discussion time speech where I'm going to give you a handful of examples um, of blogging anonymity and such and looking for any kind of feedback you guys can give. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces here, but I also see a lot of people that I have never met before. So I'm hoping that means it's a lot of beginner types because this will be right up your alley. Uh, the QR code in the top here is all of my personal information. You guys are more than welcome to grab it if you want. If you can't get it off of the screen, there are cards up here that have it on it. Feel free. And once we're done, I'll be happy to talk to anybody. I'll probably sit in the far back corner so I don't disturb anyone. And yeah, I'm, I'm an old school Simpsons geek. So I want to start off with a question. I want to Batman geek start. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with a question for you. Um, how many of you use your real name when you blog? Okay, keep your hands up. How many of you blog for a living? That's impressive, actually. So, more often than not, the people you're going to find that use their real names are the ones that try to make a living off of it, try to make a career, try to make a name for themselves. There's a recent study that came out through Discus that says that of the online commenters, which is by no means indicative of the blogging population, but the online commenters in the internet world, 61% of them use fake names, pseudonyms. A lot of people still feel like the internet is the wild, wild west. In some cases, it is. You can say and do whatever you want because no one knows who you are. It's a telephone tough guy in the 21st century. Of the other, let me do math, 39%, 35% don't put any name at all. Math is not my strong suit. If I have to do that again, it's going to take forever. <laughs> that means only 4% of the population for internet commenters actually puts their real name. And that's going to include sites like Facebook, where you're more or less bound to use your real name, or at the very least, use the name that you have in your account. Most of us, I would venture a guess, use our real name. I certainly do. This is not me. In fact, nothing on this page is me. I am not a very old man. Oh, I shouldn't say very old man. My apologies. I am getting older. I am not <clears throat> Dr. David Werner, the author. I am not David Werner, the singer. Although, Kurt would beg to differ about that, as I have guest sung on his band's occasions, or previously in college. Uh, I am not any of the people you see on the screen. I've worked very hard to not be any of those people. This is a doctor who wrote a book about third world medicine. Now, while I do work in the medical field, and I have for many years, that's not me. This is a graphic designer, thank you very much, graphic designer who also plays music, and, write, and uh, manage websites. And although I am, I'll move over here so I can talk to you as well. Although I am a big fan of graphic design, big fan of music, and obviously a fan of using the web, that's not me. However, interesting story, I got my big break because one of his websites was featured in the Blackberry Playbook ad. You guys all remember the Blackberry Playbook, the tablet that lasted for about three days and then failed? <laughs> There was a clip about half a second long of okdave.com, and it said Dave Werner. And I went, yes, I didn't have to do anything for free publicity. He's not me. Really cool guy, though. I've talked to him a few times, just because why not? He shared the same name. 
God, I hope that's not me. <laughs> Just because it's a nice round number, for this talk I went through 40 pages of Google search results on my name. Now obviously Google search is not the end all the be all of the internet. However, that is the site that is by default the search for the web. If you're looking for someone's information, that's probably going to be the first place you go. I don't know how many people in this room would go through 40 pages to find information on somebody. I certainly wouldn't unless it was for a presentation. I usually give up after two or three. If I can't find it that long, it's not that important to me. As you can see, Dave Werner is a really, really popular guy and has done a lot of cool things. Not necessarily this one. I, I, I can't even speak to that. There is a David Werner who's a doctor and has plenty of results. A lawyer. Uh, this guy's a musician. There's a writer, there's a real estate mogul, there's a scientist. I'm hoping there's at least one other scientist in the room. He's the president of Indi Indiana Museum, Uwe Pui, because I can't say that. I can say Uwe Pui, but I can't say that. Minor league pitcher for four years. I did play baseball for a long time until I was 12. <laughs> that ain't me either, especially not in the 40s. He's been married at least twice. <laughs> Ladies, this can all be yours. <laughs> He's died three times in the last uh, one, two, three, four years, and was murdered in 1989. But that happened in L.A., and that happens to a lot of people in L.A., so it doesn't really count. <laughs> That's me. And yes, those are my dogs. If you'll notice on this page, this is obviously Facebook timeline layout. You don't see my photo anywhere. You see my name, and I'm going to refer to this one because it's closer. You see the company that I currently work for. Three years, but I finally got a job. You can see that I was taking master's courses at Bridgewater State College. You, uh, excuse me, Bridgewater State University. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up in Taunton, lived in Taunton. That's a long story. That's all you're going to find about me on the web. That's the closest thing you're going to find to a personal profile. You see my name. You don't see my photo anywhere. At least not unless you friend me on Facebook. And I'm going to tell all of you in advance. You all seem like very nice people. Outside of Kurt, I don't friend anybody on Facebook unless I've known you for years. And I've known Kurt for, what, 10 years? 12? 13? Ooh, I'm getting old. <laughs> this is my monster profile. Intentionally as blank as possible. It doesn't show up in search results. There's a reason for that. Um, I personally had a very bad work experience at one of my last stops. It ended very badly for me. Just might be why I was out of work for three years. I don't want people searching that. I don't want people to find that information on me. I tried very hard to keep that quiet. Quiet is the wrong way to put that. Keep it harder to find. You'll find me on poker websites. I used to play poker for a living. This is one of the tournaments I did well in. That was what I did after I had the bad job experience because it was completely the opposite of my bad job experience, so what the hell, it was fun. Uh, this was a tournament I played in in 2009. Those are the only places you're going to find information on me. Now, the, all the year three of these websites came from a deep search that a friend of mine ran. He runs background checks for a living for a rehab clinic. His job is to find information on people. I told him to run the search three times. Once with only my name, once with my name and my birthday, and once with my name and my hometown. That's what he came up with. This is where my actual profile is. This is where you can see my time as a blogger. Now, I've been affiliated with quite a few sites. I currently write for thevictoryformation.com. We're always looking for new readers. It is a sports blog. It's very much like every other sports blog in the world. We tend to do more college sports. If anyone's a big sports fan, please feel free. We can use the hits. CHB Skyline is a private investment firm that I work with. I help run their day-to-day -day technology needs. Gotta Grab. It's an iPhone app where Microsoft, I won't pimp it too much. Yeah, I will. It's my buddy's app. It's really cool. <laughs> I've actually been writing for websites for almost 10 years now. Obviously, Zanga, Blogspot, they're not going to talk too often anymore. They're kind of yesterday's news, and they were yesterday's news yesterday. Doc Sports is a sports gambling site that I wrote for for about a year, making their lines on football. Yes? Um, maybe just a question, but is your identity actually working to your benefit? Because if you were to actually craft your identity, my anonymity has it's worked to my benefit professionally in that none of these sites have to do with my professional life. These are all to me they're hobby sites. I do not blog for a living. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. I'm a 
I don't know what I am right now. Uh, I implement software for a health software company. I travel around the country and install software and train people how to use it. That has nothing to do with sports gambling, and I probably shouldn't let them know that I'm a borderline degenerate gambler with football. <laughs> There's no real borderline about that. Uh, <laughs> SpartyandFriends.com actually became the victory formation for the site. And then Tech News Made Simple uh, was a venture of the curtain I did about five years ago uh, for technology news. Um, my online student was Big D. It's a very creative name. Back in college, I was actually smaller than I am now, but still quite large, and my name begins with D. I did not have the most creative friends in the world. That was my nickname. <laughs> I got lucky in terms of staying anonymous, and that Big D is a fairly common pseudonym online. You have Dave, Dan, Don, Derek, you know, go down the list. There's plenty of guys that are large and start with D. It's not all that, you know, great. What it has done for me, though, it's allowed me to stay kind of in the shadows. I'm not looking to blog full-time. Now, those of you who are looking to blog full-time, absolutely, get your name out there. By all means. Uh, I, I don't know your name, sir. I'm sorry. Jonathan. Jonathan. Put your name right on the top of that page. Make sure that it's in the SEO. Make sure that anyone who looks you up, you come up first. That's not what I was looking for, and that's part of what we're talking about here is, you know, the difference between the two. For those of you not from Boston, this was a very, very bad night for me. Uh, this was actually the impetus for me to start sports blogging. Uh, Kurt remembers this night because he had to carry me out of a bar along with two other guys because that was required, uh, because I was going to knock out the Yankees fans around me. <laughs> this was the Aaron Boone home run in 2003 that sent the Red Sox packing in the ALCS. This was painful. This was absolutely crushing as a Red Sox fan. This was great as a new writer, because this gave me something to write about for, well, uh, at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the date, April 16, 2003. I had already been blogging myself, just, you know, personal everyday thoughts and, you know, here's what sucks about life because I'm graduating college and I have to get into the real world now. Not too far, here we go. Eight days later, my first post went up and I knew I was going to do this. Excuse me. <clears throat> this is my first sports post. Now you'll notice again, up here, I see with my pseudonym. I was working for a hospital at the time, didn't want to really put myself out there as writing because I believe very strongly in writing whatever comes out of my mouth, whatever comes out of my head, and if you don't like it, don't read it. That doesn't go over so well in the corporate world sometimes. You all have heard the story about people getting fired for blogging and speaking their minds. It's exactly what I do, and always have. It doesn't always work out that well in the end. Lesson learned. This is actually now rolled into KurtAng.com. It used to be part of TechNewsMadeSimple.com. And just because I'm curious, does anyone know what this reference is to? Anybody know what movie that reference is, just because I don't want to feel too old? Oh, God. Never mind. Oh, well. Oh, you can read that? Wow. Yes. I was, I was kind of hoping that it was too small to read. Well, never mind. Yes. Yes. They say it's a classic Clint Eastwood, John Malkovich, horrible, horrible movie. I won't spoil it for you. Well, it depends on how you look at it, I suppose. I actually, I actually really enjoy the movie. Used to get bad reviews and used to be a lot of jokes, but this became Tech News Made Simple. Excuse me. Tech News Made Simple became Kurt Ang. You'll see again, you know, maybe you will, but I don't think anyone else will. Uh, I only use my first name here, Dave. Nice and you know, boring. You can't really look me up by Dave. If you look up Dave, I am not going to be in the top four million Google results. Actually, I don't think Google existed in its current capacity in 2006, so maybe it did. I don't know the exact date. Finally, the victory formation, which was Sparty and Friends, where I am now. Once again, you'll see I am Big D. Again, conscious choice. I'm very happy just writing for myself, writing as a hobby. Not really, you know, I'm not trying to profit off this. This site does turn a profit occasionally, every so often, like once a year. The founder of the site will send me a check for 100 bucks. Awesome, like a beer money for next month. Sweet. But again, this was a conscious choice. I kept it anonymous. There's reasons why you stay anonymous on the web. That seemed like a really good idea <laughs> 10 years ago. Kurt's laughing because he doesn't want me to put the picture up of him at the same time. Now, Facebook has provided us with plenty of opportunities to embarrass ourselves. That is actually a photo that I put up on Facebook because I really don't care about being embarrassed. 
I learned a long time ago, life is too short, just have fun. Besides, you can always dress up like characters from The Big Lebowski and continue to embarrass yourself. And there's no reason to stop drinking when there are cameras around. <laughs> you know that is, Kurt? You see it? John, that's bad. <clears throat> I won't uh, give up their names since they didn't actually consent to using their photos, but they're online, so why not? All of these photos can be found on my Facebook. Yet another reason why I'm not going to friend any of you. <laughs> Anybody know who this is? You've all probably heard about him. That is amazing. I did not expect a single person here to know who that is. His name is Good Luck Jonathan. I'm not going to ask you to tell anyone who it is because it kills the joke. However, you've probably all gotten a message from him at some point in time. Yes, he is. <laughs> He has no interest in your bank account. He is a real person. So while you may get emails from a prince of Nigeria, first things first, to my knowledge, there are no princes in Nigeria. There's presidents and there are tribal leaders. If you get a message from prince of Nigeria, don't answer it. I don't think I can tell anybody that, but just don't answer it. <laughs> this is someone who exists in real life who gets used. Their name gets put out there or their title gets put out there. Don't let yourself be one of those. Sometimes you do need to take control of your identity. Sometimes you need to make sure that people know who you are. By the way, if you get up, up close and personal with this photo, this is a horrible Photoshop. But this is what was available on his name. Someone grabbed it. It's really amazing how bad this is. And someone passed off the professional. So this story right here is kind of what the impetus of this whole speech. If anyone knows what this story is about, I ask you not to talk about it. But how many of you have heard of this potential story within the blogging world and the mainstream media. Awesome. Nobody. That's good. This was actually a very, very big story within the sports world uh, about three months ago. Actually, it was the beginning of May because I called Kurt immediately and said, can I talk at the next word camp? And then I ended up talking here because I couldn't get slides done before word camp. But you'll notice on here there are photos of at least two, potentially four different women. At one point in time, a writer passed off all of those photos as herself, or himself, or any other gender-neutral option. Someone calling themselves Sarah Phillips passed off each one of these people as themselves. Can I stop getting so far away? Yeah. Deadspin, which is probably the biggest sports blog out there, or close to it, picked up on the story, wrote an expose about it. And the reason they did, if you read the headline here, Sarah Phillips got a job writing for ESPN. Now, I'm going to walk you through the story real quickly before we advance any farther. Sarah Phillips was the blogging dream. She was just a commenter on a site called Covers.com. Yes, it's a sports gambling site. <laughs> I like this one person nodding his head. Awesome. I'm not alone in the room. we got to talk later. She was a commenter. She wrote for forums. She brought up information on different topics. But she was a nobody. She was like anyone in this room, just on the site, getting information, talking to other people. Covers eventually realized, wait a minute, we have potentially a young 20s cute girl, so that was the photo she was using at the time, who likes sports gambling as well as talk about it. We need to pay this girl, and we need to lock her up and make her ours. So Covers gave her a job. She started writing for Covers. She wrote articles for them. She wrote articles for other sites, freelance, but for the most part, she wrote for Covers. She got some notoriety. ESPN came calling. If you're a sports blogger, there is really no other site that you want to get up, get attached to than ESPN. They came and offered her a job to write for Page Two, which is kind of their comedy slash gambling side of ESPN. At no point in time did anyone from ESPN physically meet this woman in person. They gave her a job. They paid her gobs and gobs of money with a paper resume and a photo. I don't actually know which photo it was. She wrote for them for months until people started realizing she might not actually be legit. Stories started coming out of people that she was contacting and saying, I want to work with you on the side. I'm doing a side project. All I need from you is like three grand to get the advertising up and started. And then she did it again and again and again, passing herself off as an ESPN writer, which she was, because 
ESPN didn't actually do their homework. She stole nearly $30,000 from people. She stole at least three websites, two Facebook accounts and a Twitter account with 50 to 55,000 followers. I don't know about anyone in this room, but I don't have 55,000 followers. I think I have 50. Well, I have 50 that aren't bots. <laughs> By the way, if you're interested in the story, I urge you to take a look at this website here. Desmond did a fantastic job covering this. You've heard him cover right off the top of it. That's been followed up with at least five or six other stories. Turns out that there probably is someone named Sarah Phillips that may even look like that. This is her boyfriend. And one or the other, or both of them, was actually behind this entire scam, for lack of a better word, because that's what it was. Like I said, they built thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars out of people, stole websites, convinced people to give up administrative information, and they did all of this because they were anonymous. No one knew who these people were. Now it turns out, uh, I can't go back my mouth, but the other girl that you saw in those photos, who was blonde and looked nothing like this, went to high school with this girl when it was all said and done. She found her on Facebook, took as many of her photos as she could because, sorry ladies, but the blonde was a better looking girl than this one, and thought that would help my profile online. So she still used someone else's photo without ever attributing her information. Turns out the girl was a hairdresser, which probably explains the really cool looking hair. But she had no credentials, no background. She got a great job, and it all came crashing down. Now, in fairness, she was a scam artist. It should have come crashing down. You'll notice some of the bigger sites in the world picked up on this and ran with it, embarrassing the hell out of ESPN and probably embarrassing the hell out of her. <clears throat> I'm going to go through them all because I want to get to the one that I wrote. Definitely one of the bigger sites in the world. Absolutely. We've got like 12 commenters now. <laughs> Uh, by the way, for the record, I do not consider Bleacher Report to be a good site, but they had a story and I needed one more screenshot. So, like Bleacher Report is like the drink that's <coughs> worth plugging. Huh, yeah, I see those faces. That's the same face I make. For the record, you can still see her site, her writing on ESPN. ESPN has never formally come out and acknowledged the story. They simply fired her and said that she was a contracted writer whose contract ran out. When they hired her, they announced they had hired her to a one-year contract. I believe she lasted five months. I'm not good at math, but that's not a contract running out. You can still find everything she wrote on the website. You can't any, you can no longer click on her name to get a true profile, but they still run her photo. This was a screen grab that I took three days ago, I think. They still have all of her information on there. No one's really ever owned up to completely screwing up. That's about the closest you're going to get to somebody even mentioning her. And that was only because I tweeted at one of the sports center anchors who had been talking with her in the past. And he came back with a very quick, well, I shouldn't say very quick. It took him about 12 hours. Denial. Of course, I tweeted him at about 2 in the morning, I think. So I can't blame him for taking a while. This right here, this is indicative of the whole problem. No one knew this woman. No one had any clue who she was, if she was even really a person. It's not limited to ESPN. This is another story from Deadspin. Darren Ravel, if any of you have ever heard of him, works for CNBC, formerly worked for ESPN, he works for CNBC, MSNBC, NBC, NBC. Um, last year when the NBA was locked out, he ran uh, a Twitter post saying, if you're being affected by the NBA lockout and you're not actually working for an NBA team, I'd like to hear your story. I want to know how this is affecting you negatively from a business perspective. So an 18-year-old kid signed up for a very convincing Gmail account. I will not repeat what it is because it's, well, not appropriate. And convinced Darren Ravel that he was the owner of an escort service in New York City, who used to set up his girls with NBA players coming in to play the Knicks. Got Darren Ravel convinced that he was losing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the NBA lockout. Ravel not only took the story and ran with it, he talked about it on the television show. He put it up on, on MSNBC. It was later taken down. I couldn't get a screen cap in time. No one ever checked on him. The kid was completely anonymous. It was a Gmail account. Who knows him? Who knows what's wrong with him? Who knows if his site's legit? You wouldn't think that an escort service would have their own website, so no one bothered to check. 
One last question for you. Anybody know what that is? Just raise your hand if you know one. Well, I would hope you did. You sent me the link. <laughs> <laughs> How about now, anybody? Come on, he's a guy with a MacBook. Okay, I, you, thank you. Yeah. Dell. Was it Dell? Excuse me. I just saw gray. I assume MacBook. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> I, I would guarantee that most of you in this room have seen his work or seen his website. Clickers. How about now? Anybody? Nobody knows him by Matt Inman. That's his given name. He's a fairly successful web developer. Obviously, he's got one of the most popular sites on the web. But he is the oatmeal. And he has managed to make a living with the oatmeal. So it can be done that you can make a living as a, an anonymous blogger or anonymous whatever he is, illustrator, I guess. Now, quick question. Has anyone heard the story? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. I'm not going to recap that for you. That's a pretty obvious copyright infringement. Uh, if you haven't heard the story, I'll go over it later on. But essentially, a website stole his work and made thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on advertising from his ad, from his uh, artwork. Excuse me. Now, this is just one more example of where the money comes into play. If you're trying to blog for a living, this is where people need to know who you are. People need to know it's your work. See that little tiny word right there? People need to know where it came from. I'm sorry, I, I did that from way far away for you guys over there, but you get the idea of what I was talking about. You need to brand your work one way or another. Now, whether it's Dave Werner, Big D, The Oatmeal, Matt Inman, or any of the other people we put up there, you need to have a brand. You need people to know who you are one way or the other. Now, if you stay anonymous, that's perfectly fine. There's plenty of good reasons for that. Mostly that you're not doing it for a living. That's the biggest reason you'll find it. However, if you are, be prepared for that. These are a handful of reasons why you would want to do it one way or the other. Kurt, how am I doing on time? Okay. 15. These are the biggest things you need to keep in mind when you're talking about putting your name up there versus putting up the pseudonym. Are you blogging for a living? Now again, we had roughly 15, 20 hands, uh, excuse me, two hands go up, 15, 20 went up for using your real name. Two hands stayed up for blogging full time for a living. That's a lower percentage than I was expecting, but not that much lower. It's tough to make a living doing this. I'm a good example of that, it doesn't work. <clears throat> If you're blogging for a living, it's a pretty good idea to put your real name up there. Are you willing to accept the topic of fame? Now, I personally don't want to be known as a full-time blogger. I don't want to be known as the sports guy. A bunch of Bill Simmons is a lot of fun to read. Not my bag. If you're willing to be the next, who the hell's the TMZ guy? Anybody? TMZ. Thank you. If you're willing to be the next that guy, then yeah, put your name out there. You could be the next great celebrity. I might be looking at the next, whatever the hell his name is, um, <laughs> who wants to be a celebrity gossip blogger or a sports gossip blogger or a fashion gossip, whatever. You need to get your name out there in that case. You need to be the person who says, this is me. I'm, I'm absolutely high. Yes, call, call me, contact me, email me, tweet me. I want your business. I want your information. I want to get the hits. I want the eyeballs. This is the biggest thing for me. If you're writing your own page or writing a collaborative page with other people, if you're putting yourself out there, you need to expect to be the guy that has to wear a girl, excuse me. Don't want to don't be too chauvinistic. <clears throat> you need to be willing to be the person who is willing to take that phone call at 2 a.m. and say, why'd you write this? From whatever other out outlet publishing it. You need to be willing to answer that email within 10 minutes. If you're working full time, I don't know about you, I don't check my personal email at work. I can't anymore. I used to. It might also be why I was out of work for three years. Why do you need to answer 10 minutes? What's that? Why do you need to answer 10 minutes? Because if you don't, someone else will. There are plenty of other blogs out there that are willing to be 24-7, that are willing to take a question from a site in Indonesia that wants to read you your story and wants a comment from you on it. And if you can't get back to them in 10 minutes, they're going to find somebody else who has that story because the internet's a big place. Everyone's got the story within 
20, 30 minutes. But if you want to be that guy, you better be on your tablet, smartphone, laptop, toes, whatever you use to type with, 24-7, be ready to go. Unfortunately, that's not always the case with people. The guy who runs my site, everyone calls him Sparty, he's also Dave. Sparty was easier because we can't have too many people with the same name. He runs uh, an auto body shop in Jersey. He can't always be the person that answers questions, but he tries like hell. And that's good because he is making a secondary living off of the website. He's fronting the money for it, he can do whatever he wants with it. Excuse me. Plenty of other sites contact him during the week, during the day, during the work day, at two in the morning if he has a newborn baby, which doesn't blow up well with his wife. But he's willing to be that guy. He's willing to take that phone call and give them a sound bite, give them a, a one line, give them an interview piece on whatever we put on the site. Because of that, he started to build the site into more get excuse me, getting more of a foothold within the sports blog world. I personally wouldn't be willing to do that. There was a time a while back when he talked about walking away from the site and passing it off to either myself or a couple other people when I wasn't working full time. I would have been happy to do it then. Now, no way. No chance. I have my own life and that's just not going to be enough to generate the money for me. These are the these are these are probably the three biggest questions to ask yourself when you get into this kind of situation. Do you want to use your name? Do you want to be out there? Do you want to be big D? If you can answer these all the right way, go nuts. Like I said, you could be the next what the hell is the name? TMC guy. Somebody. Thank you. Yeah, I should write that down. You could be the next one. Who knows? You really could. And if your name's out there, that's the best way to get yourself going. So that's actually about all I've got here. The title pretty much says it all. Any questions? Yeah. So you talked about the benefits of being anonymous if you're blogging, just doing it on the side. So we can sort of infer from that some of the downsides to having your name out there for a non-professional setting. Mm -hmm. What would you say about people that are using Facebook with their own name and do have a lot of stuff posted publicly? Like, that's sort of the one area I didn't see people. Sure. I mean, Facebook. Facebook, you still have at least some control over as long as you can parse through what the hell their privacy settings are, which I would hope most of the people in this room have at least a good grasp on that. I took a while and read through a lot of sites to get a good feeling for how to do that. Um, my personal belief is, unless you're running your Facebook as your business, if you're running it as your blog, if you're, I, I, do you, what's your main website? My website is myname.com. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, then you are you are blogging under your own name. You're using a personal blog. In that case, your Facebook page, you got to be careful what you put on there. I guess my question was more about what are the general downsides you see to having your presence on the internet be associated with your name, even if you don't do anything remotely related to the internet professionally? Well, uh, that, that's a good one, actually, because I don't do anything remotely related to the internet. The biggest problem for me that I ran into is it didn't come across tonight because I censored myself. Excuse me, I'm hot. When I censored myself, I swear like a sailor when I write. I really do. And sometimes it's for effect, sometimes it's just because I can't think of a better word and I'm too lazy to use a thesaurus. But that does not come across well in the professional world. That's not what you're looking for. If your personal views have nothing to do with your job, I do not want to try to listen to political discussion, but your views on immigration, for example. You get tasked to write a blog where you or a blog post where you choose to write a blog post if you're doing it for yourself, if you're looking for a different site on the immigration laws in Arizona. You might feel a certain way about that. You might feel very strongly about that. Will that interfere with your business? If you're not doing it for a living, will that interfere with the company you work for? Will somebody come back and find it on you and say, Yeah, I don't want this guy working with my company? No, 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 no. No, no. He 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 wrote this. We see that a lot with politics right now, with, with politicians who did something 20 years ago or said something 15 years ago and it gets turned around on them. You see it every political season, unfortunately. With the internet, it's an archive. Nothing really gets deleted anymore. It can be found out. So if you're posting something on your site, or posting something on your personal name that either right now or two years or five years or ten years down the road you might not want people to know that it's you, you may want to consider using a pseudonym. Now, I don't know if you're making a living from your blog, or if you're doing it secondary, or from your website, rather, or if you're doing it secondary business, or just, just the hell of it, but those are all things that come into play. You know, there's, there's a reasonable chance that somewhere down the road, you might say something in print that you don't want coming back on you. 
personally, I do that a lot. That's why I choose to stay honest. Yeah. I think it's one thing if you if you start out at four years old and say, okay, I'm going to be anonymous on the web. But what if you're 30 and you decide, oh, I want to become anonymous? Yeah, that's really dumb. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not the best person in the world to answer that directly. I know there are services out there that can scrub you pretty clean from most search results and from most areas of the web. But like I said, nothing truly ever gets deleted. There's always a cached copy somewhere. Whether it's you know that really, really dumb photo of me and a buddy of mine screwing around when we were drunk at a wedding, not ours. <laughs> Massachusetts, let me clarify. I mean, that photo's never going away. But you know, I personally, like I said, I don't care about being embarrassed by things like that. Now I might care about my words coming back on me. A photo you can always explain it's like, dude, I was hammered. You can't so much do that with a blog site. You can't so much do that with any website you write for. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's absolutely not uncommon. That was the story with the oatmeal. For those of you who don't know what it was, like I said, his, his work got plagiarized. Uh, the secondary website that took the work, they didn't actually take it. They were a user-generated content site, which means that anybody can upload whatever the hell they want, like, for example, an oatmeal comic where they take out the trademark and put it up there and say, ha, isn't this funny? But it belongs to somebody else. Yeah. Well, so you can tell them you're a ghostwriter. <laughs> well, hey, at least, at least you're still getting paid, though. I mean, that's, what, let's be honest, when it comes down to it, it's about the money. I mean, it's really about the money. But, in that case, you, you kind of walked out there that you had some really not savvy feet. Anybody else? Or if not, I'm going to stop talking. Yeah? Uh, that's going to depend on the site. That's going to depend on where you post things. And I'm, I'm not enough of a coder or a programmer to know the correct answer of that. I am certain there are people in this room that can give you a much better answer than I can, though. Anybody want to answer that? If you embed the link, will that protect you? It'll help. <laughs> Do you have your hand up? the early adopters are willing to jump right in. I'm actually starting to see where it seems like we're moving really much more toward an author-centric search ecosystem. I wonder kind of what, you know, do you have a, a sense of what... You know, in, in that, that situation, I mean, that's great for the authors because more often than not, if you're writing something to get paid, you want your name on it. You want that recognition. Chris, give me a high sign for five, so I'm going to kind of cut it here. But you want your name out there when you're trying to make a living off of it. It's, it's very hard to pull off what Inman did there and become the oatmeal. You know, I mean, the photo, I don't know if you guys remember the photo, and if I still have my mouse, I would try to figure out how to back it up. But there's a photo of him sitting there holding a book at a book fair. That's awesome if you get that kind of notoriety. But more likely, you're going to be Big D holding the book with nobody standing in front of you looking for a signature. All right, guys. Thank you.